The purpose of this video is to explain the importance of connectivity from where you're accessing the cloud and to the actual cloud provider themselves. So the first thing we'll do here is draw the cloud provider. The actual service that's in the cloud in this case isn't really the most important. Um, it, it can impact how, uh, how critical the connectivity is, but in this case we're going to be a little more generic in this. So this is going to be our cloud. We're hosting various services from here. It might be email, desktops, et cetera. Over here, we're going to have the office that we're accessing from. So we've got our people in the office, and they're very happy to be at work. It's a Monday, and they couldn't, they couldn't be happier. Now, <clears throat> there's really a couple of different ways we can get from this office into the cloud provider. <clears throat> the first, is going to be essentially accessing the internet. And uh, I'll draw this in a different color that hopefully stands out. This is just going to be the internet. Of course, you can access lots of other things in the internet. What we want to do and what we're going to make the assumption of here is that the cloud provider is already very well connected to the internet. We talked about this in a previous module, all the resiliency and connectivity that goes into uh, connectivity from the cloud to the general internet. So we already have this established. What we want to do now is make sure that we get our office connected to the internet. And this is, in some cases, pretty basic, but we're going to have one circuit or transport connection. And this could be anything from you know, DSL to coax. It could be uh, a Cox provider. Um, this could be Metro E. Doesn't, doesn't, I mean, it, it matters, uh, and it's important to understand what it is we're accessing so we can size this appropriately, but ultimately right now, for the purpose of this video, we're talking about the different uh, ways of accessing. So this would be a single circuit, okay? One circuit. And we have a certain amount of risk that's going to come with only having one circuit. Of course, there's going to be a lower cost because we only have one circuit. What we really want to do is provide resiliency to our cloud so that our, our workers on a Monday don't have to go home because we've lost our connection to the internet. So what we want to do now is provide a second circuit that's diverse. If we have Metro E on the first circuit, we might not want to get Metro E for the second circuit. Maybe we want to get coax. Maybe we want to get some other kind of type of dedicated connection. Uh, maybe we want to use a different provider for Metro E. Ultimately, we want to ensure that these two types of connections are different enough where we're mitigating our risk. Of course, this does come at additional cost if we have two connections. It's going to be not necessarily twice as expensive, but obviously it's going to be a, an additional cost. Now, that's if we're accessing the internet. The optional way is we're going to take and get an actual dedicated connection, and you can do both, from the office into the cloud provider. Now, this could be a lots of different connection types. It actually could still be Metro E, but it's actually terminating into the cloud provider or into some kind of aggregator service. Uh, it could be uh, some kind of point-to-point, -point, uh, and, and there's a lot of technologies that have provided these types of circuits over the years. But the same kind of consideration here, this is a single circuit, and there's going to be a certain amount of risk that comes with this. Now, in regards to the cost of our, we'll call general internet broadband, um, this is typically going to be less expensive than this dedicated circuit, because what we're providing, this is a shorter, um, we'll call it shorter wire to get to the internet whereas our wire here is going to be dedicated all the way from point A to point Z. So this is going to be more expensive. But there's still a certain amount of risk that comes with this single circuit. So now what we want to do to protect this traffic, and this could be called a protected circuit, what we're going to be doing is um, increasing our resiliency, minimizing our risk. We're going to ask the provider of this circuit to protect the circuit, which ultimately means they're going to engineer and architect this so that we have maybe, maybe this connection comes out the east side of the building. This one may come out the west side of the building. This comes into the cl cloud provider on the, the north side of the building and maybe comes in on the south side of the building. You get the idea. We have diverse circuits protected so that we minimize our risk. If this goes down, this circuit continues to run. So in these scenarios, we can actually do both. And uh, in, in the internet circuit, the other thing to mention is you can also leverage a technology called SD-WAN. And we'll go into that in more detail in a, in a different module. 
Um, that's another way of taking these two circuits and leveraging both circuits in the, to the connectivity to the internet ultimately to bring it into this cloud provider. So we've got our internet connectivity, our dedicated connectivity, and now we have a happy office on a Monday all the way through Friday.